Hello, my friend, and greetings from the Unidome in Cedar Falls as Cedar Falls Community Television is excited once again to provide you with Cedar Falls Tiger football. Hi, everybody. Mark Simpson with you, along with the coach, John Yoakum, as we get set for tonight's game as the Tigers host a very talented Cedar Rapids Kennedy team. John, a lot of storylines going into this game, the two big ones being final regular season home game for the Tigers here at the Unidome and another one probably the most important with the victory the Tigers can probably solidify a playoff spot. Exactly a big night all around you there are a lot of emotions tonight for the Tigers but it's an important game to get off to a good start. It's packed the dome tonight here at the Unidome. Now as we look at the Des Moines registers class 5A rankings you see Cedar Rapids Kennedy currently ranked number four in the state Well, the Tigers coming in at number 10. West Des Moines Dowling, the number one ranked team in class 5A, according to the Des Moines Register. Latest RPI rankings from the Iowa High School Athletic Association. Right now, Cedar Falls is 11th. So John, you feel with the win the night, the Tigers may be able to even host a playoff exactly. game. Exactly, yeah, I think if they win tonight and they win next week, they're gonna be in that seven, eight range and potentially host the game. You see Kennedy number five. Here's the Tigers schedule so far. It's been up and down. Tigers coming off a big win against Dubuque Senior last week and this will be one of their toughest opponents all season long in Cedar Rapids. Kennedy coming in five and two on the year as we're into week eight of the high school football season. Some of our players to watch and uh, defensively Drew Curtis what a monster he has been defensively from his linebacker position. He is an impact player. Yeah very physical and when he shows up he's got bad intentions. And for the Tigers offensively we're going to spotlight Tate Hermanson three year starter Tigers really need a big game from their senior signal caller tonight. He's going to probably do it with his legs and his arm tonight. He does a good job of scrambling and uh, he's going to have to use both tonight. And Hermanson looking for a big outing here on senior night for CF. Here's Kennedy's schedule. They lost their first two games of the year but have steamrolled everybody since. And you can see they lost you know a close one to Pleasant Valley who's ranked fifth. Dallin Catholic's ranked number one and then kind of cleaned up the rest of the game. So this is a good Kennedy team tonight. So this will be a big task for Cedar Rapids Kennedy kind of a measuring stick how they are here late in the season. And Kennedy loaded with talent. We saw this guy last year as a sophomore Vinny Gianforte uh, excellent quarterback that directs his high powered Kennedy offense. Yeah, he can do it all legs and arm he's leading the state in a lot of uh, passing categories so see if we can contain him tonight and other players to watch for a Kennedy. He leads the state in touchdown receptions at Cyrus Courtney as he's a big play receiver and one of Gianforte's favorite receivers. And then another player to watch both sides of the football Calvin White terrific linebacker but also gets used quite a bit offensively. He has 10 touchdowns this year and he is a weapon in the red zone. He's a fullback to like to use in a lot of ways when they get down near the end zone. Comparing the uh, numbers obviously offensively Kennedy with the big edge. And you see Kennedy averaging 39 points a ball game. Last 10 meetings last year Kennedy came in unbeaten and the Tigers used a big first half to surprise the Cougars 23 to 16 ending a two game losing streak to the Cougars. So we're expecting a fun one tonight as Cedar Falls host Cedar Rapids Kennedy final regular season home game at the Unidome. We'll be back with more right after this on Cedar Falls Community Television. Experience the Kia difference at Witham Kia. Engineered with purpose and designed to inspire, the groundbreaking Kia lineup of award-winning vehicles offers something for everyone. Like the new Kia Sorento, offering powerful engine options, ample seating and cargo space, and available all-wheel drive. Or the new Kia Sportage, where fun and functional meet so you can take control of any adventure. Everything we do is 
Welcome back, Mark Simpson, along with John Yoakum. And throughout the evening, we're going to be joined by the man with the name and the knowledge, Jeremiah Longnecker, as we look back at some of the great moments at the Unidome. And uh, Jeremiah, thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. Oh, it's fun. It's, uh, it's enjoyable to be on with the both of you. So uh, the Tigers trying to pull off a huge upset against 5A number four, Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Back deep for the Cougars will be Jacob Doyle along with Davarian Harris. And the Tigers ready, set to kick off. The ball going to be spotted at the 40. Kale Harms kicking. Harms the sophomore. Final regular season home game for CF here at the Unidome looking for some magic. Here's the kickoff. Dance me picked up at the eight. And Harris weaves his way just across the 20 yard line. And we'll see a look at that explosive Kennedy offense. And Jeremiah, remember this game? Uh, we look back in history as the uh, Tigers erupted for 70 points against Waterloo East. Yeah, Mark, you and I called this game together up here, and boy, the Tiger had their passing game going. Well, they had everything going that night, of course, but you know, there's a punt return for the touchdown. But that was a uh, that was that was quite a quite a night. Cedar Falls could do no wrong. They scored almost every possible way. Is Vin Forte, uh, Vinny. Gianforte is under pressure and the Tigers get to him as uh, it's going to be a sack Ian Bonenkamp. The pocket just kind of collapsed on him there and, and Bonenkamp was a beneficiary. That's his fourth sack of the year. This is going to be messing with me. They have the chain gang on the near side. Not, They're always trying to mess with him. I get, <laughs> it's now a Second down and 12, ball at the 19 yard line. And they're going to keep the ball on the ground. Taking the ball up to the 20 yard line. Trevor Scott. Scott, 562 yards rushing coming into this ball game. And the Tigers do a nice job plugging see, that line. See big of number 73, Brooks pulling there. Can you imagine stepping into the hole and that's the guy meeting you there? Nick Brooks is a giant. Iowa recruit. He's committed to Iowa, 6'8", 385 pounds. He's, well, he's not hard to miss out there. So Gianforte on the third and long, back to pass. Pocket still there, and he throws it, and it's going to be caught by Cyrus Courtney. That's near the first down marker, and that is going to be enough for the first down. That's one of Kennedy's players to watch there. Courtney just a big target a big safety blanket out there for their quarterback. That's his 52nd reception of the year. 6 295 pound senior. He le tied or leads 5 a in uh, touchdown receptions. It's more like a tight end with wide receiver speed basically. So the Cougars convert on third and long. They work out of the eye formation. We put trap play there and fullback is stopped. That's Calvin White. White, he is the uh, son of the head coach of Brian White, who's in his ninth year as the head coach, been highly successful here at Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Looks like he gets a lot of love in the red zone too. Ten touchdowns on the season for him. He's also yeah, running and mostly receiving. He has seven touchdown catches. The well, fullback's a guy you can lose track of sometimes in the passing game. Second down and eight. Ball to 34. Opening drive for Kennedy. They on the jet sweep, and the Tigers read that well and going down. As the uh, Tigers do an excellent job, it's a uh, Zion Jackson Collins who got the handoff and uh, loses it like big Dellinger yardage. Was the first one to get there. Maybe Campbell cleaned him up. 
Big thing on that jet sweep is to get it turned upfield as quick as you can. Don't let him get running to the outside. So it's third and 14, the ball to 28. Cougars were able to convert last time, have to get to around the 42 yard line. Harrison motion back to pass. Oh, they set up the screen nicely. Pass over the middle. Tigers though swarming and able to bring them down right about the uh, 34 yard line. Well, short of the first down. The dome was loud and they had a hard time hearing the whistle there. The good coverage, I think Curtis is the one that finished it up here. You see him just fly into the picture there. He's aggressive. Mark Simpson along with John Yoakum. Jeremiah Longnecker as well will be joining us throughout the broadcast. And in the punt, this will be Nick Woods. Tigers have two men back to receive. And it's a line drive kick. Here's Logan Rowe. He returned a punt a couple weeks ago, 81 yards for a touchdown. And the wall is set up, and then he's angled out of bounds, but still great field position for Cedar Falls, right about the 50 yard line. You talk about a, you know, the dome. Last game of the dome, they've run return right for a long time here in this dome, and they had a pretty good wall set up there. And Rowe did a good job of getting to the edge. Jacob Doyle able to push Logan Rowe out. Here's Cedar Falls working at the 50-yard line. Tate Hermanson is the quarterback. Trey Gelhouse will be the running back. Corn Fuchman, the H-back. Set. Rest of the Tigers here in just a bit. Hermanson under center. In motion, Caden Smith, top of the field. And first carry, and Gelhaus, who had a huge performance against Kennedy last year when he carried the ball 40 times for 189 yards, three touchdowns, gets the first carry of the ball game and picks up good yardage. Yeah, 40 carries the last time they were approaching a record there. Second down and five. Tiger offensive line, the tackles, Jake Peters, Will Tompkins, the guards, Connor Best, Hayden Bishop, Ty Koltoff is the center, Ethan Benneke is the tight end. And again, it's Gelhaus. Gelhaus may have picked up enough to move the chains there as he. It's going to be close. The officials are marking third down there, third and short. You see his knee touched. So it's going to be a third down in a yard. Here are the receivers for the Tigers. Kate Corbett has been coming on. He has three touchdown receptions. Ethan Benneke, Logan Rowe, big play. And Will Remmer coming out of the backfield has been an effective weapon with 13 catches and a pair of touchdowns. Quarterback sneak and Hermanson. Ah, boy, he did not. He stretched his arms far enough to get it out in front there. He didn't have it with the initial progress, but had the awareness there to stick the ball out in front of him. He got kind of stoned there right in the middle and then stuck, stuck the ball out. I believe that was Calvin White, the middle linebacker, who came in and caused havoc from the get go. Well, the Tigers just picked up enough. 6.40 to go, opening quarter. Tigers on offense for the first time, getting great field position. This began at the 50 yard line. Out of the shotgun, as Herman said. Rolls out to his right, gets a good block, turning the edge, and will grab about six, seven yards on first down. That's where if you have an athletic quarterback, you can use that as a number. Gohouse does a good job of getting on the edge here to lead block, picks up the linebacker there, good block. Hermanson makes one guy miss to pick up the extra yardage. Kennedy right now after averaging, uh, giving up just 18.4 points per ball game. There's Cedar Falls head coach Brad Remmert in his 19th year trying to guide Cedar Falls to the playoffs for the 18th time. Hermanson under center now. Tigers pack it tight on the left side. And Gelhouse gets the quick pitch. Maybe picks up a yard or so. So it's going to bring up a third down and short coming up. I'm sure all week in practice, Kennedy was saying we've got to stop number 29. Oh, for sure. 40 carries last year, kind of the, the bell cow last year, but they're doing a good job of getting him going here. And the, and the Tigers appear to be using 6 0 linemen in an unbalanced set as well. Tigers this year averaging about 202 yards per game on the ground. 
Third down and two. Ball to 32 of Kennedy. Cedar Falls will go with Gellhouse. And Gellhouse on the counter, picking up great yardage. That's a first down run. The, the play design looks like it's going to the left because they stacked the two extra blockers offset there, but it's kind of a counter the other direction. And Drake gets some space to run there. Ryan Bartles, free safety with the tackle for Kennedy. Drake Gellhouse last year, 1,400 yards. Uh, missed the first three games of the season this year for the Tigers. Nursing an injury coming into this game, just below 400 yards rushing. He's had a solid high school career for the Tigers. Kai Smith in motion to the right from his tight end position. Pitch out, Gellhouse. And Tigers have some good blocks, and he's able to weave his way right about the 14, 15 yard line. And you can see a uh, normal starting tight end, uh, Ethan Benick, he's out tonight in street clothes there. It looks like Kai Smith's getting the bulk of that workload there. Benick, he usually does the kickoff duties as well. Yeah. So stepped in a hole on the practice field. That's why he's out. Oh, wow. While wow. he was running a route. Kill that gopher making the holes here. Here's Hermanson looking to throw, looking to the end zone. Caught! Give him six! Big play by Corbett. Go get the ball. Okay, Corbett at 6 7, making a great catch in the near corner, and the Tigers take an early lead. The other thing you have to love about Hermanson's throw here is he puts it high enough where Corbett's the one that can go get it. Don't make it a throw at his chest or his waist. Put it up top and let Kay go get it. 15 yards. And Hermanson with a uh, nice strike, his sixth touchdown pass of the year. Harms, extra point, good. And Cedar Falls takes a seven to nothing lead. Get this throw, puts it up top, nice and high. Corbett does a nice job of putting his hands on it, and bringing it down. There's Corbett. Did not play football for the last couple of years, coming out and uh, slowly has turned into a real effective weapon. I think that was one on one with Courtney there on the edge. And, uh, you know, they've, he may not play football the last couple of years, but there's uh, some basketball, some basketball matchups there over the years as well. So that's just a jump ball for a rebound right there, Mark. Again, the highlight of a pump fake, nicely done. You also have to give the line credit to give Hermanson the time because that was kind of a slower developing route. He's got to go inside first and then to the outside, and he had the time to make the throw. Okay, Corbin, his seventh reception and his fourth touchdown of the year. Well, I'd say if you're a Tiger fan, that's a pretty good start. Stop their offense, he's been clicking, and our, our offense goes right down the field and scores. 50 yard drive. Again, the Tigers got excellent field position after a Stopping Kennedy and a good punt return by Logan Rowe. Harms kicking off. And it's a short pooch kick and to be taken at the 20. This is Harris again. Oh, great job by Cedar Falls getting down there in a hurry and grabbing the tackle. I think it might have been Ben Bacchus there on the tackle. It is. Cougars will be on offense for the second time in this game at their own 25 yard line. Another uh, personal matchup to watch tonight is, you know, Drew Campbell on the end there with, with Brooks, both Iowa commits or recruits, and uh, should be an exciting matchup all night. Drew Campbell, the All State defensive end, second on the Tigers in tackles. Strong side to the right for Kennedy, and they'll try to run up the middle, and the Tigers again have. Done a good job slowing down that rushing attack for the Cougars here in this first quarter. Hey, you see Brooks normally plays left tackle. They overload him to the right side, and Campbell basically switches wherever Brooks goes. He's going to line up there. And Jacob Doyle getting the handoff. He and Trevor Scott, the two running backs, averaging 6.9 yards per carry. This offense has been explosive. They've been putting up numbers all year. I'll put Cyrus Courtney, Pierce McCrary, McCrary to the near side. 
And here's a pass over the Dangerous. head and almost picked off as Nolan Plaggy was close to catching that. It's an incomplete pass. I think McCray was the intended target probably, but definitely sailed that one a little bit. Plaggy almost was able to make a play on it back there, Garden Courtney. Vinny Gianforte, six foot, 190 pound junior. Yeah, from what I've noticed with that Campbell Brooks matchup, Campbell's speed is bothering him um, on these plays. Now, on a passing down, they move Campbell inside to a D tackle position on the same side as Bone Camp. Third and eight at the 27. And they put a little heat over the middle. Picked, almost oh. picked off by Drew Curtis. Had it. Almost had his third interception of the year. And he's like, mad at himself. That's a good job by the, the, the CF coaches moving Campbell around there. When they realize it's probably not going to be a running play, it's a passing down. Move him to somebody they think he has a better chance of beating right away. And you can see he just blows right by, right up the middle. Curtis almost picks that one off. Nice job by McCrary actually playing defender and knocking that ball out of the hands of Curtis. Yeah, Tigers bring the heat and it's a, again a short kick. Tigers make the fair catch. It's row at the 45 yard line. So good start for the Tigers defensively John. Yeah great start two stops in a row. And here's a great highlight for Seed Falls 1982. Quarterback on that team. Jeremiah Lawnecker, what oh, do you no. remember about this? Oh, yeah. He's, he's yeah. Six. Now, this is Taylor Pine who returned this his first time. Cedar Falls had just beaten Davenport Central with uh, uh, Marshall Cotton and Booker Scott, and everybody thought the Tigers were going to win. I was in this crowd. I was in eighth grade. It was huge. Taylor Pine returns the first one for a touchdown and think, ah, oh, this is going to be good. And it was all downhill, and I watched Ken Koltoff play. He was one of the starting tackles. Uh, I'll still say one of the best teams in Cedar Falls history. We'll be showing great highlights throughout the game. Jeremiah Correction, 86 state champion team. As Tate Hermanson with a run on first down of four yards. So, so far, the Tigers doing a good job offensively being on schedule. Exactly. No, no penalties and no negative plays so far. Logan Rowe split wide to the left. 319 to go here in a quick moving first quarter. 7-0, Cedar Falls. Kai Smith, the tight end, moving to the right. Tigers run that direction. Gelhouse finds a little bit of seam, puts the shoulder down, takes the ball to the Kennedy 40-yard line. Gelhouse does a nice job of here, kind of pressing the hole and then waiting for it to open up. See a little stutter step there and then explode through and then Safety's got no chance there. Drake's putting his shoulder down. He's getting a couple more yards. I like the way he finished that. Tigers. It makes, it makes you not want to tackle yeah. him the next time. Tigers four and three. Kennedy five and two. Cougars are playing tremendous. They've won five in a row after losing their first two games of the season. One of those by just one point. And this is Gelhouse again. Big running room as he takes it close to another first down. Nice uh, kick out block there by Fuchman there on the edge. So they press the press the side and will kick out block and Gelhouse does the rest. It's a pickup of eight yards for Gelhouse. Again, Drake last year. Just 40 carries. Yeah, 40 carries, 189 yards, three touchdowns. If you get seven or eight yards every play, though, I don't. It'd be hard to go away from it. That was again the Tigers had a 23 3 lead at halftime, then had to hang on for a narrow three point win. And look at him spinning for the first down. And the uh, Tigers move the ball to the 28. Now Cedar Falls all time is 17 and 5 against Kennedy. Kennedy has only won one time here. Jeremiah, you can. Uh, <laughs> well, I was thinking they never had, but uh, Jeremy out corrected us back in 1993. So 30 years ago, Kennedy had that win, but I suppose there's a good reason why I don't remember that. <laughs> one to forget, but the Tigers have won eight of the last 10, including last year's meeting. Hermanson under center. He's going to throw, rolling to his right. He's under some heat. And he'll throw it on the run and uh, coming back to the football. I think Caden Smith may have caught that on the sideline. I think he may have bobbled it and hit the turf there. 
So good play by Hermanson here, though, to extend the play and throws a pretty good ball here on the run. Watch at the end of the play, Smith. Yeah, hits the hits the turf there. It's a heck of a throw. And Tate Hermanson. Tigers again, as we mentioned in the pregame show, really need a big effort from him here on senior night. Second down and ten. Ball at the 28. Tigers up seven nothing. Scoring on their opening drive. Gelhaus going up the middle. And Kennedy does a nice job filling the hole. They just missed a block there on that on the left side there on the end. There was a pretty good hole other than that. Shit. That's when those are almost at the block him wherever he goes. If he goes inside, you just got to block him down and let Gelhaus make the decision. Braylon Henry with the uh, tackle. So it's a third down and eight. There's the Tigers record all time at the dome 214 and 65. White. Oh, they provide the heat and Hermanson's pass under thrown. Looking for Logan Rowe, and now it's fourth down and eight, and the Tigers kind of in that four down territory. I think you probably have to go for it. I haven't seen this kick up football this far this year. So the ball resting, I think I said 28, 26 yard line. Fourth down and eight. So Cedar Falls keeps the offense in. Big momentum play for both teams. Tigers two line to the right one to the near side out of the shotgun Hermanson blitz on throws it across the field that's going to be intercepted and that is uh, Cyrus Courtney stepping in front coming up with the interception it looked like I think it might have oh, been, been Benson nine maybe. not four nine with the yeah that, I mean almost worked out as a kind of a punt there but you, you want to throw it up give, give yourself a chance but if they pick it off here that's fine just make the tackle and you got to take a chance there. So Hermanson. I think they may have had a broken route and a couple of guys in the same spot. Hermanson throws his eighth interception of the year and Jamari Benson. That's his second pick. And probably have been wiser just to knock the ball down. Exactly. So here comes Kennedy on offense for the third time. And again, they try to hammer it up the middle, and the Tigers have been very stingy defensively. You can see their great size across the offensive line 270, 270, 300, 225, 385. I mean, that is a huge high school offensive line. Yeah, that's collegiate size, even pro. 21 yeah, seconds to go here in this that. first quarter. This might be the last play. Gian Forte and the Cougar offense facing a second down and five. And uh, the Tigers again get to the ball carrier in a hurry, and that will close out the first quarter. So Cedar Falls on the 15 yard touchdown pass. Hermanson to Corbett with a 7 0 lead after the first 12 minutes here at the Dome. We'll be back with more right after this on Cedar Falls Community Television. CFU has a tremendous focus on customer service and establishing that close-knit relationship with the community, community involvement, and a great emphasis on their employees and taking care of everybody as if they're a family. My favorite part about my role here is being able to provide excellent service for our customers in the community and build relationships. state champion team yeah you know uh, it's interesting don't remember a lot of the game to be honest with you uh, I was doing an interview with Jim Nelson earlier in the week is what do you remember about the game I'm like not a whole lot <laughs> I just remember getting beat up pretty good early on 
Oh, big run for the first time, and that's a Trevor Scott finding a seam. That's enough for a first down on third and three. And Kennedy picking up their second first down. It's kind of the first play that they've run up the middle where they've gotten good yardage. Tigers with 79 yards in that first quarter. 64 through the on the ground, 15 through the air. The 15, of course, the touchdown pass. Quick pitch and running to the near side, the big man. And uh, that's a Jacob Doyle. 6'1, 205 pounds. Yeah, that's a physical running back there. Quick pitch, get him to the edge quickly. So it's a quick gain of seven yards. This is where he has an offensive play caller. You like to open up the playbook here. Second and short, run any kind of play you like. Cedar Falls undersized to this massive Kennedy offensive line, and even their uh, backfield has a lot of beef. And this is Doyle tripped up right away on the tackle. Drew Campbell for Cedar Falls. It's just uh, boggles my mind what he's done here as a Tiger, as a defensive end, second on the team in tackles. That's just unheard of. It's just really hard to block, and it's it's not like the other teams don't know about who he is, and be able to do that while being double teamed and and schemed against is pretty impressive. Yeah, so Brooks in it, guard. This would be a sneak. Third down and one, and Jim Forte dives forward, and that's another first down for the Cougars. Cougars head coach Brian White, in his ninth year, eight years as a defensive coordinator before that. Spent 11 years at Cedar Rapids, Washington under Paul James, a former Cedar Falls Tiger. Prepped at Linmar, and he was a sophomore, uh, Jeremiah, on that 86 Is that right? team <laughs> that uh, uh, you beat at the in the championship good. game. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, do it again. <laughs> he's a record of 69 and 32 at Kennedy. Brought him to the finals a couple years ago. And, oh, the Tigers! Rip it out. Trying to Curtis grab the ball out of out. Trevor Scott's hands as they double team him. That's a yeah, loss look, on first down. Look who causes this whole see. thing. Campbell took three three blockers out, blew the play up, and Keys and Gertis clean him up from there. Gertis leads Cedar Falls in stops. Keys has had a very strong junior season from his weak side linebacker position. Second down and 12, ball at the 39. Cedar Falls up 7 0. Gianforte out of the shotgun. And he throws it over the middle. Oh, and it's caught. Devarian Harris makes the catch. Tigers just an inch away from knocking that down. Out. Oh, man. Drew Curtis almost got a hand on it, but it's. it's Great pass. Gianforte dropping it in the bucket. And Harris makes the nice catch. So with the ball now in Tiger territory at the 35, and here comes Kennedy. And they'll have Pierce McCrary split wide to the right, Cyrus Courtney to the left. Oh, and movement by the big man. When you're that big, nowhere to hide. Exactly. Yeah. Not gonna be able to sneak that one by anybody. Nick Brooks. He's committed to the University of Iowa. He's just a junior. That's the scary part. Hey, he's only going to get stronger. 849 remaining here in the first half. 7 0 Cedar Falls. You watch him, he's not a mauler. No. Yet. Yep. Not saying he's easy to get a good, easy to get by. No. So now it's a first and 15 ball at the 40. That's another penalty. Yeah, they were not set. And consecutive penalties. And that has Brian White taking off his headset. He's upset about his, his team. It's on like that. he's calling an audible here. So back to back, That's five a big yard advantage penalties. For the Tigers here, you got to take advantage of this. Yeah, it's first and twenty. The ball goes back to the forty-five. And there's Brooks talking to his teammates. So 
So they're going to have Gianforte under center. And he's going to throw in first down. Ball deflected, Tip. hangs in the air, but incomplete. Tigers got a hand on it. We'll see who uh, in red knocked it. Let's watch Drew Campbell. I think he pushes. Nope. It, oh, it's Robin Cook getting his hand on it. But what a point <laughs> surge Drew by Campbell Drew just Campbell. Drives him back. <laughs> right into his lap. Cook, a senior, 5'10, 232. And he gets the deflection. Second down and 20. Play action. A lot of time. Airs it deep and overthrown. Courtney had to play defense there at the end of that play on Whelan. I, I like what they're doing here on, on kind of more obvious passing downs. They put Campbell on the inside against the guard he can beat quicker. And uh, he's causing a lot of problems. Talk about Courtney, number four there, out with the little shove on Caleb Whelan, hey. the free safety. <laughs> so Campbell's helmet. It's like just. Barely any paint left on that thing. So it's a third down and 20 now. Tiger defense trying to step up. Bleacher creatures in the whiteout. Gianforte looking to his right now, running over to his left, and will dump it off. And it's going to be caught near the original line of scrimmage. It's bringing up a, a fourth down, about 10, maybe nine yards to go. Tigers ran a stunt there on the inside, and Campbell kind of looped around on a cross pattern. So the offense stays on the field for Kennedy. Again, this is a team averaging 39 points a game and averaging 436 and a half yards per game. Fourth and nine, ball to 34. Huge play for both teams. Gianforte in the pocket, steps up, dumps it out, and it's McCrary trying to get to the first down marker, and he's going to be short, and the Tiger defense holds. He did a great job of keeping everything in front of him, forced him to throw that crossing route and then make the tackle. This is not an easy tackle here with an athlete in space. Three or four Tigers get to the football. Coonrat, Gerdes, Keys. So the ball is spotted at the uh, 28 yard line. Here comes Cedar Falls back on offense. I believe this is their worst starting field position. It's also important for the offense to get a couple first downs in almost every possession because you can see how hard those defensive linemen are working to battle that Kennedy offensive line. Strong side to the right play action Hermanson's going to throw Hermanson has a receiver he's going to go deep and knock down he was looking for Will Remmer coming out of the back well I guess lined up in the slot and uh, they were able to knock the ball down he had a step on the defender early like both teams almost felt like there's pass interference on that play it's kind of early maybe on Kennedy and late maybe on Cedar Falls Bartles gets his hand up and Knocks that pass down. Second and ten coming up for the Tigers. Probably going to let that throw go a little bit earlier to lead him a little bit. Tigers scored on their opening drive. They went 50 yards, capped off 15 yard touchdown pass. Tate Harmonson to Cade Corbett. And the Tigers running the reverse. And not surprised here was Kennedy as they box in Logan Rowe and uh, drop him at the 30. It was good discipline there by Kennedy to stay home, watch your keys, and turn it back inside. That was Remmert correction with the uh, carry. Little Remmert, just a sophomore. So both coaches have sons playing out there. Calvin White for Kennedy and Will Remmert for Cedar Falls. Third and eight, ball to 30. Blitz shown and a legal procedure against the Tigers. It definitely appeared that Kennedy is blitzing. Creeping up and kind of flinching at the line of scrimmage. Did you see where the penalty occurred? It, one of our offensive linemen flinched, I believe. That was right tackle, I believe. Right tackle, all right. And now it's a third down and 13. 
Kennedy faithful making noise. And Harmonson's going to go down. Owen Anderson, kind of that hybrid that Kennedy uses, and it's a kind of linebacker, defensive back, and he comes in and gets the sack or be credited for the sack. It's almost like they're trying to set up like a wide receiver screen, fake the Gilhouse to the right side and throw a screen back to the left. Hermanson just didn't have enough time to get the ball out there. Anderson second on the Cougars and tackles. So Cedar Falls will be uh, punting the football. This is uh, Toby Julian McCleary punting for Cedar Falls. Oh, not a good kick at all. This might not even get to the line of scrimmage and will be died at the 33. So not a good punt by Julian McCleary. And now great field position here for Kennedy. The defense got to respond here. Next play move on here and. And there's Cougars. Quickly lining up. And they'll run it with a Doyle and oh what a terrific tackle by uh, Cedar Falls Colin Coonrod. I like his physicality there. He just attacks. He makes a tackle. He's going to attack you. Again, Doyle's a big kid, 6'1, 205. And Coonrod. Big kid, too. Yeah. Goes Physical. up high on him and uh, still brings him down. Coonrod, his eighth tackle for a loss this year from his strong side linebacker position. 5'16 to go here in a quick moving first half. Gian Forte, he's going to roll out and he'll dump it out underneath. Big hit <laughs> on who? Calvin White. Coonrod tattoos him at the 30. Like he's almost baiting him into that little crossing route. So please throw it to him so I can just unload here. Boom. That is a pop you hear up here. The shoulder pads connecting. White comes off after that. He's going to tell Gian Fonte just to run that one next yeah, time. Okay. I'll, a, I'll leave the block for you. Third and seven. Ball at the Cedar Falls 30 yard line. Cougars trying to cash in on the great field position. Following the short punt. Jim Forte back to pass. Tigers bring the heat on him. Chase him out of the pocket. Lagan Schulte giving chase. And they complete the pass. That's well out of bounds, though, and incomplete. So now it's fourth down. There's almost holding on the left side there on Bone Camp. You can see it right there, tugging his jersey, but good pressure by the front by the Tigers. Andrew Lagaschulte, the 5'11", 247 pound senior, barreling after Gianforte. Fourth and seven, ball at the 30. And a timeout taken by Kennedy, 4.16 to go. Mark Simpson along with John Yoakum and joining us, uh, Jeremiah Longnecker, as this is the final regular season home game in the Dome for Cedar Falls. Looking back at some of the great memories. And let's go to the vault. I love this. This is a long run for a touchdown. And watch Jacob Keeler. Keeler, state high jump champion. Unbelievable, best high jumper in history. Obviously had some speed as well. And what against Dubuque Senior. One of the longest plays in Cedar Falls history. Didn't seem like it took him that long. No. He, <laughs> he got there pretty quickly. He could he could run. Again, so a counter. Yeah. From the three yard line and he was off. Yeah. Unfortunately for Dubuque Senior, the Tigers came together a pretty good highlight reel over the years <laughs> of long plays against them. And we'll be going to the vault throughout the evening here. Great job by our Cedar Falls community television crew. Fourth down and Six back to pass. Gian Forte throws it and it's going to be caught for the first down, making the reception. And that is Harris, Damarian Harris. I think that's the best the Kennedy's offensive line has, has held the pocket for him all day. He had plenty of time, just too much time if you're going to stop him on fourth and seven there. 
Now the ball at the 19 408 before halftime. Tigers scoring on their opening drive. Kennedy trying to get in the end zone for the first time this evening and we have an officials timeout. See. You guys, any idea what this is about? I have no idea. And with the time of the time and the clock. Initially, that's what I thought too, John. I thought probably a time issue. Let's see, my. I don't know. I think they wanted to talk to Coach Remmer as well. Well, back yeah. to action we go. Let's make him replay that fourth down, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Can we challenge that? Yeah, exactly. Well, again, uh, some discussion with the officials. Um, it's resetting the play clock or some kind of timing issue. I think and what happened initially is he said we're running the clock and then he stopped it. So I wonder if a couple extra seconds ran off. First and ten, and a Doyle. Slams into the line of scrimmage, picks up two, three hard fought yards. Tiger defense. It's been stout here in the first half. Lag of Schulte, among others, on, in on that stop. Yeah, you can tell Kennedy wants to establish a run game to set up the pass game, but they've played a lot of good opponents, but I'm not sure they've faced a better front four than what the Tigers have, and they're finding it out tonight. Jake um, Peters, normally an offensive lineman, playing defense. On this series. Second and eight. And there's a big look. There's a look at uh, Big Nick Brooks. Gene Forte. Fake play action. And it's going to be caught near the 10. Oh, the yards after the catch and getting down to the one yard line is McCrary. He's elusive. He's quick. He turned around and he thought you had him in your hands and he just, whoop, and he's gone. And it's going to be a first and goal at the one yard line. Quarterback took a shot there too from Campbell. Clock rolling 306 remaining here in the first half. Kennedy on the doorstep. And with that huge offensive line, you're asking a lot with your defense to try to keep out of the end zone. Fullback there too. And there's White. Mr. Touchdown, Calvin White. That's his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. 11th offensively, and it's a 7 6 ball game with the extra point coming up. Kennedy takes advantage of the short field there and marches the last 30 or so yards for a touchdown. And try for the extra point. This will be uh, Dylan Augustine. He's 29 out of 32 on point after tries. Good snap, good hold, and look at that leg. No doubt about it, and then we're tied at seven. A top ten match up here, just what we were expecting to see. And it's Gianforte. That's it's that big reception down. on fourth down. To keep that drive alive. So again, just a short 30 yards to go for Kennedy after the very short punt. There's that catch by McCrary. There's the fullback, Calvin White. He brought Logan Johnson in to play a fullback, 6'1, 275, the lead block for White. That's not fair. 7 7. And Tigers have all three timeouts remaining. Let's see if Cedar Falls can get a nice return here on the special teams. Caden Smith averaging 21 yards per return is standing at the 10 yard line. He's the deep man for CF. Here's Augustine who just drilled that extra point. I'm going to take a guess that he's on the soccer team. Going to be Smith backpedaling at the six in middle of the field. There's running room. Smith still on his feet. Excellent return all the way up to the 43. 
You could see the wedge, but he just had to make sure he had to be able to get to it. It's like the wedge was closing quicker than he could almost get there, but he was able to find it and get a nice return there. We're going to go to the vault again. Great memories here at the Unidome. Right, this is one of the best, of the West uh, Jeremiah Barkley Hill. Yeah, just one of the all-time greats in this, uh, in this place. Motion. Barkley, he just could do it Big all. Pitch. Here's Barkley this Hill was, uh, cutting well, up the field. 35, 40, 45, <laughs> and now it's a foot race. Uh, I believe this Barkley was Hill coming the, to the near uh, side. The one man to beat. And he will be pushed out of bounds at the 10. And Barkley Hill. on six of them. Barkley Hill. He challenged Aaron Sprady for that rushing record. He was an amazing back. Had some injury issues when he got to college, which was just, just too bad. Just never got a chance to really fulfill his college potential. Loss of one on first down for the Tigers. Two Wolf 20 is remaining. Quarterback. Oh, now we have Leighton Wolf at quarterback for Cedar Falls, the sophomore. And he's going to air it deep. Oh, and he's looking for Will Rummert. Ball deflected, juggled, and it's going to be picked. And Ryan Bartles with the acrobatic interception. And again, Rummert got a step with the pass under throw. They want to take a shot there, and great balance and coordination here from Bartles to make that catch. Concentration. Shades of Lynn Swan. This it's the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> that was a great catch. You know, there are a lot of bobbled catches in history. You didn't have to go to Lynn. Antonio Freeman with the Packers like laying on his back or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That Bartles his second interception, second pick for the Cougars here in the first half. 208 to go. They have two timeouts. And this explosive offense can. Oh, and big hit. 14. Fumble. He got hit from behind. It looks like the Tigers have recovered. Legashol was the one that got the hit there, and I think Cook was the one that scooped it up. Roman Cook recovers, but it, look at the hit. Look it's, at the spin by Legashol to not give up on the play and then just deliver a boom. So Cedar Falls at the 21 yard line of Kennedy. What a momentum turner. First inter the first turnover for Kennedy. Under center, here comes Hermanson and the Tigers. Three year starter, Tate Hermanson, pitch. And this is Gelhaus. And this time, read beautifully by the Cougars as they converge. Ask me a loss on first down. <laughs> Jake Peters drove his block into the end zone. They're on the 20 yard line. He's, you can't, he's out of the screen, but big Jake Peters is driving his guy all the way into the end zone. And playing to the whistle, definitely. Second down and 12, loss of two. Gelhaus got off to a good start. He'll get the handoff. Trying to pick his hole. And Kennedy, what adjustments have they made, Jeremiah, here? Well, one of the things they're doing is they're shifting. Normally they don't shift out of that three front, but they are shifting to that unbalanced side. And they're allowing those linebackers to flow a little bit more freely. And so it's uh, this is a team that the Tigers have run unbalanced against for forever. Uh, just, a, just an afterthought. Playing Kennedy, time to get it unbalanced to run the football. Brad Rammert talking to the Tigers, Brian White to his Cougars, two veteran coaches. What do you think our range is here for a field goal? Are we in range right now? Yeah, you know, uh, Brad was up talking um, earlier this week and he said he's banging them from 40, so that's about what it would be. Okay. Yeah, I think he'd be really comfortable from here. He'd like to get a couple more. But uh, yeah, I, I think we'll definitely see the field goal unit if they don't get any additional yards. That almost. I'd love to see a shot up top to Corbett again. You know, if you're going to throw a jump ball, see if you can get one to Corbett again. Kale Harms, the place kicker for the Tigers, two for two this year, as long as 37. They're yeah. really happy with Harms. I know Coach Remmert's pleased to not even have to think about that kicker position for a couple of years. And, you know, that's maybe not a big deal to people that don't play or know football very well, but that's a huge deal for a coach. 
Third and 11. All resting at the 22 yard line. Will Remmert motion near side. Direct snap and Hermanson the quarterback. It's right across the 20. Yeah, setting up that field goal. Yep. It's a big hit uh, placed on him by Kennedy. And that's see, a Trevor Scott. The time out here. So the ball right now resting on the right hash mark. Minute and 10 seconds to go. So it'll be about 36, 37 yard field goal. Yeah, I thought Kennedy maybe was the one that called timeout to, to try to get the ball, but I think they said the Tigers are the ones that called timeout here. So the big hit on Hermanson, watch this. Great tackle. Yeah, his right, his right leg kind of got bent weird or awkwardly. And we're going to see if the offense or the special teams unit coming in the minute 10 remaining here. And Cedar Falls. will have the Kale Harms. So. Officially we're calling this a 36 36 yarder. Toby Julian McCleary is the holder. And now Kennedy uses cool. a timeout. The gamesmanship may be a little bit here to ice him a little bit, but you also lose that timeout if you get the ball, if you want to stop the clock. But this is a really important play. I mean, three points is huge here in a game like this. So 7 7. Tigers took the early lead, scoring on their first possession. Kennedy just tying it on a one yard run by Calvin White. And now let's uh, go back to the vault. And the great Terrence Franey, a legend. I don't think anybody will argue he's the the best running back that's ever played. And in my mind, this 99 team, which you see on the field right here, just in the state finals against Iowa City West, there's nobody better than Terrence. He was just uh, he was a man amongst boys. Now that 99 team. They defeated West Moines Valley in the semifinals in one of the greatest high school games I've ever seen. Went on to lose that game in, in overtime. Just an incredible two game stretch. Harms. They're trying to put the Tigers ahead. Kick is up and it is good. Good snap, good hold, good kick. I thought he'd be hesitated in this. Kick initially looked good to me right down the middle. And Cedar Falls, Kale Harms, perfect three for three this year for the sophomore. And ever since I've been doing this, Cedar Falls has been spoiled with kickers. I mean, it seems like we always have somebody that can make at least a 35, 40 yard field goal, and sometimes even farther than that, 50 yards. And so that's a huge weapon in high school football. Not everybody has that. Makes an enormous difference when you're calling plays. Uh, as far as how it is that you decide, you know, in this particular yeah, case, and ten, you can run for three or four right. yards and kick a field goal rather right. than having to try to get the first down. One of my favorite dome memories: Cedar Falls playing Waterloo West, and Brian Winger kicked a 50-yard field goal, and uh, Tigers won a great game in Waterloo West. They had a guy named Akeem Carter. Later, a national wrestling champion at Warburg that Tigers could not block that. He, was an, he played nose. Yeah. yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah. And they, uh, yep. but I remember Winger trying a 50 yarder. I thought Pat Mitchell has lost his mind, and I thought for sure it was going to be a fake. And sure enough, he booted it through. Winger kicked two 50 yard field goals in the same game against Waterloo East as a sophomore. And he finished the year on varsity, which made a whole lot of sense. Short <laughs> kick. And there's, a spot. there's always a spot Doyle for a guy with that the can return. Do that. And let's go to the vault, and here's one yeah. of my favorite all-time players, uh, Logan Wolf. You and me both. Yeah, they decided to play Logan one-on-one -on -one and outside. So, all right, this is simple. How about a little quick slant and see ya. And this is a dome record, 97 yards. Yeah. I just love that he was pulling away. It's both great athletes out there. 
Losher put it right on him in stride and off to the races. One of the most unselfish kids I ever coached was Logan Wolf. Trevor Scott for Kennedy, a first down, picks up a couple yards. We're under a minute to go here in the first half. Tigers regain the lead 10 7 on that field goal by Harms. Let's just remember how ferocious and competitive he oh was. Oh, boy. Just an ultimate competitive. He would do anything to win. Yep. And if that meant, hey, I'll take the double team, go the other direction, that's what he would do. He was so football intelligent and so unselfish. He was just an incredible teammate. So. They keep the ball again on the ground. So it looks like Kennedy content going to the locker room here down by three. So as you see if you, you get a first down or a big play, and if you don't, then you just kind of let it go. So you have to be impressed with the Tiger defense here in the first half. They did a great job. And the only score they gave up was kind of that short field, and you got to be pretty happy with what they're doing. So halftime, man, Cedar Falls leading 5A fourth ranked Cedar Rapids Kennedy by three, 10 to seven. Here in the uh, final game, regular season game to be played here at the Unidome. Lagas Schulte's big fumble, in the, in the forcing that fumble, leading to that field goal. And Cedar Falls with the lead here at intermission. And we'll return with more after this. This is Tiger Football on Cedar Falls Community Television. Experience the Kia difference at Witham Kia. Engineered with purpose and designed to inspire, the groundbreaking Kia lineup of award-winning vehicles offers something for everyone. Like the new Kia Telluride with seating for up to eight, an upscale interior plus advanced technology, or the new Kia Seltos offering luxurious seating, intelligent features, and ample passenger room. Everything we do is driven by you. Shape up at the Cedar Falls Recreation and Fitness Center. Push yourself with high intensity interval training. Pump it up in our strength and cardio conditioning center. Fitness classes include yoga, cycling, and TKO kickboxing. It's all included with your membership. We offer morning and early evening child care. Whatever your fitness level, we have a place for you at the Cedar Falls Recreation and Fitness Center. I would say what sets us apart is how we treat our customers. I'm very proud to represent CFU and continue to provide the level of service that's been established by decades of quality service and establishing that trust within the community. What sets CFU apart is how reliable our service is. Welcome back. As we go back into the vault and we talk about Tiger football, Jeremiah Longnecker, the man synonymous with Cedar Falls football. Uh, this was uh, another great team and, and a great game, but mostly this is Pat Mitchell's last game. And man, it's, uh, it just gives me chills to even see Mitch. Uh, you know, he's everybody's best friend. I don't know if there's been anybody more popular in, in this uh, in this city than Mitch. And there was a lot to Mitch. Much of it we can't talk about on air, and a lot of it that we can. But what I'll, I'll tell you, the one thing ab about him is that he loved every kid that he coached, and he believed in all of those guys. I believe coached over 1,600 athletes. Yeah. There he is, the when he uh, retired, fourth all-time winningest coach in Iowa history. His, his wife Joe next to him. All right, we'll be back with more after this. This is Tiger Football on Cedar Falls Community Television. Meet Mike. Hello. Mike's the iron chef of his house. But instead of seasoning tonight's meal, Mike's getting peppered with demands from his family about their internet connection. Thankfully for Mike, this recipe calls for a dash of support. With CFU Wi-Fi, our highly trained technician will install a new Wi-Fi system and provide Mike's family with tech support 24-7. Now, Mike can focus on tonight's meal without all the extra ingredients. CFU Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi made simple. Raise your standards in a new Witham Volkswagen, where you'll find design, comfort, capability, and advanced technology. Turn heads in the new Atlas, where Volkswagen has made a big makeover for a big SUV with both a refreshed interior and exterior. 
or the new Volkswagen Taos, offering you performance, efficiency, and value. So find it all in a new Witham Volkswagen. Everything we do is driven by you. Addison, did I ever tell you about the time that Ali Farokuna shot a last-second three-pointer to beat Kansas and put you and I into the Sweet 16? Actually, he made the three-pointer with 34 seconds left. And you and I led nearly the entire game. How do you know that? You need to watch more Panther Sports Talk. Watch Panther Sports Talk in HD on CFU's Channel 15. CFU has a tremendous focus on customer service and establishing that close-knit relationship with the community, community involvement, and a great emphasis on their employees and taking care of everybody as if they're a family. My favorite part about my role here is being able to provide excellent service for our customers in the community and build relationships. Hope you're enjoying our coverage of Cedar Falls Tiger football. Mark Simpson with the coach, John Yoakum. We look at some of the first half highlights. Tiger defense really good against Kennedy. And Tiger offense, first time they had the football. They found some holes for Drake Gellhouse. As he gouged the Cougar defense early. And then the Tigers getting on the board. 6-7, Cade Corbett with a nice catch and a well-thrown uh, pass from quarterback Tate Hermanson take a 7-0 lead. Tiger defense again, the story, first two quarters of play. Gellhouse had his moments. As he got off to the strong start. But then the Cougar defense coming up with a, a big interception by Benson. And Benny Gianforte and the uh, Cougar offense eventually were able to get on the board as they uh, were able to get onto the Tigers side of the football and after a short punt they took advantage of it. And this is McCreary that was a fourth down stop by Cedar Falls and then this led to the uh, short Cougars getting a sack on Hermanson. And the uh, shank punt. And the Cougars take advantage of the very short field. Hard hit by Colin Coonrod to start the drive, but then on fourth down, big catch made by Devarian Harris. And then it was McCreary. Look at the move. We had two guys there just made them both miss. <laughs> and then Mr. Touchdown, Calvin White, getting in from one yard out. And we're tied at seven. Tigers trying to come back. Look at this. Catch for the interception for the uh, Brian Bartles, the free safety. But then the Tigers force the turnover. Andrew Lagasholte on senior night forces the fumble. Robin Cook with the recovery. And this leads to this 36 yard field goal by the 10th grader, Kale Harms. 10 7, we're at the break. We'll be back with more after this on Cedar Falls Community Television. I'm proud to be at CFU, honestly, for the role we play in the community. I feel like we give a really good value to our customer. Um, we don't just stop at our meters, and I think we go above and beyond. I also think what sets CFU apart from other utility companies is how focused we are on customer service. In every utility, we provide customer service. It's not just the customer service department. Raise your standards in a new Witham Volkswagen, where you'll find design, comfort, capability, and advanced technology. Experience the new electric Volkswagen ID4, where its style, performance, and functionality set it apart. And when it comes to style, technology, and fun, there's nothing like the joy of driving a new Volkswagen Jetta. So find it all in a new Witham Volkswagen. Everything we do is driven by you. 
driven by you. Meet Linda. Hello. Linda just bought a smart home hub and was ecstatic to see her grandkids on their weekly chats. However, this grandma spends most of her time troubleshooting across time zones. Fortunately for Linda, technical support is right down the road. With CFU Wi-Fi, our highly trained technician will install a new Wi-Fi system and connect all of her devices. Now, Linda can chat with her family and ask about their week instead of her password. CFU Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi made simple. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by CFU Cable, your home for Cedar Falls Tiger Sports in Cedar Falls. Coverage of this event is made possible by CFU Cable subscribers. For more information, go to CFU.net. We'll be back with more right after this. This is Tiger Football on Cedar Falls Community Television. CFU has a tremendous focus on customer service and establishing that close-knit relationship with the community, community involvement, and a great emphasis on their employees and taking care of everybody as if they're a family. My favorite part about my role here is being able to provide excellent service for our customers in the community and build relationships. Addison, did I ever tell you about the time that Ali Farokunas shot a last-second three-pointer to beat Kansas and put you and I into the Sweet 16? Actually, he made the three-pointer with 34 seconds left. And you and I led nearly the entire game. How do you know that? You need to watch more Panther Sports Talk. Watch Panther Sports Talk in HD on CFU's Channel 15. Experience the Kia difference at Witham Kia. Engineered with purpose and designed to inspire, the groundbreaking Kia lineup of award-winning vehicles offers something for everyone. Like the new Kia Sorento, offering powerful engine options, ample seating and cargo space, and available all-wheel drive. Or the new Kia Sportage, where fun and functional meet so you can take control of any adventure. Everything we do is driven by you. And we go back to the memories as we open the vault and a couple guys played who have played in the NFL from yeah. Cedar Falls. Yeah. Yeah, this is pretty special. This is my uh, this is my son's senior year. Ike Butker on the tip there playing defensive end. And then you see uh, as an NFL player there number 71 Ross Pierce Baker another NFL player. So you know not a lot of highlights. In the over the years with two NFL players in it for the Tigers, but this is pretty cool one. Ike Butker getting a hand up. Ike going to Iowa. Ross, of course, yeah. to Alabama. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't recognize Ike was a starting quarterback as a junior. Uh, then got an offer from Iowa to go play tight end. Turned into an offensive line and yeah, just plays O line in the NFL. And a great memory. And another former Tiger yeah. now in the NFL, and you know him well, Jeremiah. Uh, he's, you know, I think he's just a lot of people's all-time favorite because of the way he played the game. This is a game that he had 17 tackles. Jack Campbell, uh, of course. Jack Campbell in Southeast Polk in a, a semifinal game. Jack uh, had had as good a motor as anybody that I can ever recall. Uh, He's an incredibly high character guy, as everybody knows as well. But man, the thing that has never changed is that when he hits somebody, you know it's Jack. And for those years at Iowa, when he hit somebody, you knew it was Jack. And, and now he's not getting as many of those, but still playing with the Detroit Lions, he hits some guys you're like, oh, that was Jack. <laughs> and uh, he's one of the most humble people you ever be around. He was look, all about school. There's look at the vertical <laughs> there. He was, you know, he, another one of those incredibly unselfish people. And, you know, when your best player um, is also your hardest worker, oh my goodness. Gosh. <laughs> and, and he's uh, as unselfish and as great of a leader as Jack Campbell. You know, coaches' work is really easy. Uh, boy, this is a fun game. You know, this was tough. Southeast Polk got hot in this game, if you remember right. Uh, or in this postseason, they had three losses, but they were just chewing up clock. 
and they were ahead of us and then uh, we took the lead and had this game on gone on a little bit a little while longer it was going to be a blowout. But and some of the highlights. Wow. Jack Campbell. Wow. All-American at Iowa. Watch this. Oh, oh he knew how to finish. <laughs> Don't throw me the yeah, ball. Well, there's your future Butkus Award winner right there. Number one draft pick for the Detroit Lions. We'll be back with more after this. Tiger football on Cedar Falls Community Television. I would say what sets us apart is how we treat our customers. I'm very proud to represent CFU and continue to provide the level of service that's been established by decades of quality service and establishing that trust within the community. What sets CFU apart is how reliable our service is. Shape up at the Cedar Falls Recreation and Fitness Center. Push yourself with high intensity interval training. Pump it up in our strength and cardio conditioning center. Fitness classes include yoga, cycling, and TKO kickboxing. It's all included with your membership. We offer morning and early evening child care. Whatever your fitness level, we have a place for you at the Cedar Falls Recreation and Fitness Center. Experience the Kia difference at Witham Kia. Engineered with purpose and designed to inspire, the groundbreaking Kia lineup of award-winning vehicles offers something for everyone. Like the new Kia Telluride with seating for up to eight, an upscale interior plus advanced technology, or the new Kia Seltos offering luxurious seating, intelligent features, and ample passenger room. Everything we do is driven by you. Lost in all the shuffle with all the uh, things going on tonight. It's senior night. 28 seniors being recognized before the ball game, along with their parents. Always an emotional time knowing you're playing your final home game, John. Yeah, exciting times for them and the, the implications of the game. The last game in the dome. Senior night, just so many emotions tonight. A lot of talent in this year's senior class that have uh, continued the uh, tremendous tradition of Cedar Falls Tiger football. We're at halftime. Cedar Falls leading 5A fourth ranked Cedar Rapids Kennedy 10 to 7. We'll be back right after this on Cedar Falls Community Television. Experience the Kia difference at Witham Kia. Engineered with purpose and designed to inspire, the groundbreaking Kia lineup of award-winning vehicles offers something for everyone. Like the new Kia Sorento, offering powerful engine options, ample seating and cargo space, and available all-wheel drive. Or the new Kia Sportage, where fun and functional meet so you can take control of any adventure. Everything we do is driven by you. CFU has a tremendous focus on customer service and establishing that close-knit relationship with the community, community involvement, and a great emphasis on their employees and taking care of everybody as if they're a family. My favorite part about my role here is being able to provide excellent service for our customers in the community and build relationships. Raise your standards in a new Witham Volkswagen, where you'll find design, comfort, capability, and advanced technology. Experience the new electric Volkswagen ID4, where its style, performance, and functionality set it apart. And when it comes to style, technology, and fun, there's nothing like the joy of driving a new Volkswagen Jetta. So find it all in a new Witham Volkswagen. Everything we do is driven by you. 
Meet Susie. Hello. Susie couldn't wait to unwind with her newest thriller novel. Too bad the only villain in this story was her suspect router. Overwhelmed by options and technical jargon, Susie needed to crack the case of the router's riddle. Thankfully for Susie, this mystery is easy to solve. With CFU Wi-Fi, our highly trained technician will install a new Wi-Fi system to optimize coverage for her home. Now, Susie can get back to playing detective in any room of her house. CFU Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi made simple. Shape up at the Cedar Falls Recreation and Fitness Center. Push yourself with high-intensity interval training. Pump it up in our Strength and Cardio Conditioning Center. Fitness classes include yoga, cycling, and TKO kickboxing. It's all included with your membership. We offer morning and early evening child care. Whatever your fitness level, we have a place for you at the Cedar Falls Recreation and Fitness Center. Welcome back, halftime, Cedar Falls on senior night with a three-point lead over Cedar Rapids Kennedy in a very defensive first half. Cedar Falls only 73 yards in total offense. Kennedy 126. And, and Kennedy both, had 33 total plays and Cedar Falls at 24. Yeah, both teams' uh, defenses played very well. And you know, one thing I always feel like Cedar Falls does a good job of is making adjustments at halftime. Um, I always feel good about in the second half. We come out of if we're ahead, we're tied or close. I feel like we're always going to make some nice adjustments, get off to a good start, and go from there. But um, we never see what we come out with here because we get the ball first here to start the second half. Gellhouse ran the ball well early, and then it seemed like Kennedy was able to counter as the game progresses. There's a stat: 46 years Cedar Falls has played here at the Unidome. This is the 280th game. A lot of Tiger football here under the Teflon roof. One of the uh, landmarks in sports in Iowa. Yeah, one of the roofs. There have been several <laughs> <laughs> over the years. Had, there would have been uh, four or five more games one year, except uh, in 1998, um, had to play all the games over at Waterloo because the dome wasn't available because they were redoing the roof. So took a year off. The Tigers and Kennedy, long rivalry. Look at the Tigers' record at the dome. That is incredible. That is a 214 wins, 65 losses. Of course, Cedar Falls next year will be playing at the new field adjacent to the new high school. And that'll be interesting. Like on a night like tonight where it's raining and cold. Exactly what I thought coming over. But I'm glad we're calling this game in the dome, Mark. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to worry about it. You'll be in the press box. Okay. It's nice and new, John. Yeah, so. Climate control or whatever. That's right. Yeah, there you go. You know, the funny thing about that dome record, I can kind of remember some of those 214 losses. I could probably go through and catalog our wins. To, I could catalog every 60, 65 of those losses. <laughs> yep. I was a part of a lot of them, uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. through the years. And some of those that really hurt. Jeremiah, player and a coach. And speaking of coaches, this is the staff. And look at all the experience. Ken Koltoff played for the Tigers, part of that 82. Uh, Team that went to the state championship game, lost to Helan. Brad Remmert, 29 years. I mean, there's really a lot of experience. Yeah, and all Cedar Falls guys. That you know, that's the cool thing. Every one of these guys wore the CF uniform and and loved being part of it. it it's just part of your identity, and, and it gets in your blood. And yeah, it's just so enjoyable to be part of the staff. Well. Second half, and what adjustments, Jeremiah, do you see Cedar Falls making? I think uh, you'll see not very much defensively. Uh, you know, maybe a tweak here and there. You know, they'll run a couple more blitzes off of things that they've seen. Um, but offensively, I, I think you'll see them go back to that unbalanced set that they had so much success with early. 
And as we were talking off air, probably go more to that weak side because they're shifting to that strong side and now you just come back because really you're still playing against the same defense. There's just the guy over and you still have the same advantages. So I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them come back, you know, against that flow. Dylan Augustine was set to boot the ball to begin the second half. Caden Smith got a long return in the first half. Back deep. And the Tigers with Logan Rowe, I believe. Yes, it is Rowe up to about the 30 yard line. And here comes the Tigers offensively. Tate Hermanson, the quarterback. Running back Drake Gellhouse. Corn Fuchman is the H back. Offensive line, the tackles of Jake Peters, Will Tompkins, the guards of Connor Best, Hayden Bishop, Ty Colt off the center. And the Tiger receivers will have Logan Rowe, Kate Corbett, who caught that touchdown pass, Ethan, and it's going to be Kai Smith with Beneke out with the injury. And the Tigers, first and ten, two receivers, top of the field. There's your unbalanced set again. And carried to Gell House. And it's Trayton Potter, nose guard, able to submarine his way in there and come up with a stop. Kennedy's kind of shifted into those gaps so you, you, you can't get a, a clean shot at them and they're just plugging everything up and not a whole lot of running room there for Gill House. So it's a second down and ten. No gain on the play for Drake Gill House. Tigers. Roll out, pass, and underthrown to Corbett. Corbett had the was open, but pass underthrown by Hermanson. And that's one where he maybe had a little more time to set his feet than he actually thought there, and just a little low and away there for Corbett. Tigers averaging 29 points a ball game, 318 yards per ball game. Come up with a big third down conversion. Showing blitz was Anderson here on the near side. Here he comes and he gets to Hermanson again. Second sack of the game for Owen Anderson. And the Tigers will face a fourth and long as they punt at the 15. There's not much you can do there. No time to throw. And maybe the next time you get in that situation, might run a, a screen or a draw to try to combat that aggressiveness. So but that's exactly what Kennedy wanted out of halftime there. Strong safety Christian Casper also helping out in that tackle. So here's Toby Julian McCleary. A little bit longer kick than the last time and gets a better roll. And this will go to the 42 yard line. So oh, much better. Gets Tigers out of that hole. And here comes Kennedy on offense. Tiger defense. And uh, Cedar Falls up front. Defensive ends, Drew Campbell, Ian Boningcamp, tackles, Andrew Lagasholte and Robin Cook. Linebackers, Drew Curtis, Colin Coonrot, Jarrett Keyes, and the defensive backs of Plaguey, Gilbert, Wheeland, and Schreiber. Quick pitch to the right, and this is Trevor Scott, and good open field tackle. Coonrot. Colin Coonrat making his presence known tonight. McCurry tries to block him on the edge here. Colin just kind of gets rid of him and not a great block on the edge there. He just steps in the hole and makes the tackle. Asking a lot of McCurry. Yeah, that, that's not an easy assignment. He actually kind of just turned and ran away. Colin Coonrat, tremendous baseball player, is committed to the University of Iowa. Just a great athlete. Multiple, multiple sport athlete for Cedar Falls. The false start there, I believe. And pretty penalty free game so far. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It's uh, what's that? Maybe the maybe the fourth penalty of the game. Well, that, they've all been the deep drive Kennedy had. The two false starts allowed us to get that stop. This might help us right here. It's a second down and 14. We're just underway here in the uh, second half. Tigers leading 10 7. The difference in the game a 36 yard field goal from Cale Harms. Cedar Falls, number 10 in the state. Kennedy, number four. And 
And Jane Forte has Wheeler time, out. throws it, and it's going to be caught by the big man. And Jacob Doyle, first down reception. Coming out of the backfield, and uh, Doyle makes his fourth catch of the year. And he's hard to bring down. Takes a trio of Tigers just to push him out of bounds. You could tell where he was going with that one pretty quickly. He wanted to throw that ball and that kind of wheel route to the running back. Vincenzo Gianforte, the junior quarterback for Cedar Rapids Kennedy, completing 65% of his passes coming into the game. He had 20 touchdown passes, just three interceptions, over 1,700 yards. He's a good one. Back to pass. Drops back four steps. Lost it. Far sidelines. Hey, that's going to be intercepted. Nolan Plaggy, his third interception of the year. And Kennedy turns the ball over for the second time. Great awareness there by Plaggy. He knew he had help to the middle. So he kind of had the outside contain, and they threw it over, overthrown there to Courtney. And Plaggy makes a nice play on the ball. Well, Cedar Falls, first and 10 at the 22. He high pointed that nicely, didn't he, John? Exactly. The first downs have been critical for Cedar Falls in this ball game offensively. When they've been productive, they've been able to move the football. But I mean, when they've been stopped. We've got to stay ahead on down and distance. The third and 10 is, is not good for us. Quick pitch. This is Gail House. Oh, he's going to throw. Wide open is Logan Rowe at midfield. Logan Rowe coming down the near sidelines. Tackled from behind. And it's a huge gain on first down. I actually think that was Drew Gertis that threw that pass there. It is Drew Gertis. My apologies. You know, he did a good job of waiting until the last second. And he took a shot for that pass. He absolutely took a shot, but he got the ball down there. Had me fooled. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't see him. I didn't think he was throwing it. Great job. 44 yard pickup for Cedar Falls. And they run out of the eye. Gelhaus back in at running back. And here comes Drake. Finding running room left side. And keeps the legs moving and takes it inside the 20. Yeah, interesting to see the replay. This. There was a great hole there on the left side of the line, probably right behind Jake Peters. His. Oh, Kai Smith absolutely pancaked someone there on the edge too. It's a way to we stay on the field. Whole, we haven't seen a hole like that in a quarter or two there. Kai Smith, he's a big man, 6'5", 215 pounds. Strong side left. The Tigers will take it up the middle. Again, Gelhaus following that left side. And it's another well, close to a first down run. Well, you get to see another one of Gilhouse's biggest strengths. You get him about seven yards downfield, and he's going to make it eight, nine, ten with that extra yardage after contact. Again, a injury plagued year for Drake Gilhouse, who had over 1,400 yards rushing last year. It was just under 400 yards coming into this game because of uh, missing first three yeah, games of the season. Injury to start the year, but he's getting stronger as the year goes on. Second down and three. Oh, they're going to go with Fookman and the uh, H back plows forward. To only his eighth carry of the year, and that will be enough for a first down. I always joke you got to get the fullbacks touch every once in a while, just keep them interested because they block it on pretty much on every play. Let them think they're skill kids. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Corn Fookman. And the Tigers now first in goal from the seven leading by three. Pitched left Gelhaus cuts it inside takes it down to about the three yard line. It's a good run by Gelhaus. He hit about the five yard line carries him down to the two also a good block by Fukman on the edge here. Right there carries 35 he carries that Miller. Or White, sorry, carries White about three or four yards there, the leading tackler from Kennedy. They're going to put the ball at the two. So Jake Peters, the uh, All State left tackle for the Tigers, going to Nebraska. Left guard Connor Best providing some running room. Strong side of the right. They'll go the opposite way. Oh, and coming in and uh, disrupting everything is Owen Anderson again, and a late flag flies. You see a replay of this, but Jake Peters. 
It's flattening number 30 in the back of the end zone here on the end of this play. Wasn't able to get there, but it's a penalty here on the Tigers, I would guess. It's going to be a hold against Cedar Falls. So I believe this might be the first penalty against Tigers in this game, and it comes at a critical time, though, deep into Kennedy territory. 633 shows on the clock remaining here in the third. So we go from the two back out to the 12 yard line. So we're bringing in a few more receivers here. Smith and Rowe, I think, are in the game. Now on senior night, Tate Hermanson threw a touchdown pass in the first half. Passing situation again for the Tigers. They'll throw it. It's going to be a double pass. Roll a bullet into the end zone looking for Caden Smith, but it goes incomplete. Inventive. They threw it to Rowe behind the line of scrimmage. It's a nice design. They act like Rowe's coming on a jet sweep, and he stops. He's able to keep depth behind him to throw it backwards, and then Smith tries to sneak into that open area. Now it's third and goal from the 12. Four Tigers have attempted passes in this game. Might be a record in the last game of the dome. Uh, officials time out at in the largest game, Drew Gertis. <laughs> <that's that> yeah. <laughs> probably because yeah. Drew Gertis was the longest pass. Yeah. So the Tigers slot on either side. Hermanson will throw near corner and oh, it's in there for the touchdown. Give him six. Hermanson with a beautiful pass. Logan Rowe with the reception. Drops it in the back corner there. Rowe can get it. Throws it right over the top of the Kennedy defender. Great throw here by Hermanson. But watch the way that Rowe keeps the defender off. Watch him pause. He almost turns his back to him. He Shields does. Him. Benson with the coverage. Rowe. Hauls it in. His third touchdown catch of the year. Harms extra point is good. And now the Tigers take a 17 to 7 lead. It's obvious, but it's huge with our defense playing the way it is. A two score lead is huge in this game. There's the interception by Plaggy. Get the football back for the Tigers. Here's Gertis. Wasn't pretty. Effective, though. It was effective. <laughs> That was the 44 yard pickup on that and this is a little bit more dropped it in the basket right there scenic I guess the uh, catch there and the beautiful throw Logan Rowe the big play man for the Tigers this year he has passed a couple times this year for throwing a couple touchdowns he's rushed for 87 yards and hauls in that touchdown reception he's just a guy that needs to touch the ball I mean Needs to be involved and he can kind of do it all. Yes. Again, another of those multiple sport athletes that Brad Remmert loves to have on this team. So on senior night, the seniors really playing well, and the Tigers ahead by double digits now by 10. Still a lot of football to be played here. 6-16 to go. Harms kicking off. He's kicking because of the injury to Beneke. And up the middle. And look at the running room. And it's Trevor Scott across the midfield and all the way into Tiger territory to the 38. Great effort by Nolan Blakey to save the touchdown. Tiger kickoff team has been really good this year. And look at the just finding that hole and accelerating Trevor Scott. The ball at the 37 yard line. Huge play for Kennedy coming right back after giving up the touchdown pass. Trevor Scott just had that long return. He's the running back. Here he comes to the right, finding a little bit of a gap before being brought down by his ankles. They bring Courtney in motion here as almost like a lead blocker. Exactly what it is. They, they bring him in motion and he's the lead blocker on the edge with Coonrat. Drew Gertis 
Middle linebacker for the Tigers, able to bring him down. Gain of four, second down and six coming up here. Fun one here at the Dome. Two ranked teams going toe to toe. Shades of the old Mississippi Valley Conference days. Says, here comes Doyle, and looks like he picked up enough to move the sticks. Kennedy has lots of good options here. Doyle's a good option at running back, a big physical runner. You know, Kennedy establishes everything with her physicality. Up front with the big linemen, big running backs. Courtney on the edge is a large player out there. First and 10 at the 26 yard line. So that big kickoff return. A jolt for Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Trying to come right back after the Tigers taking a 10 point lead. Gianforte hands it off again to Doyle. Oh, roll on the tackle there. You know, you see guys like Jake Peters playing a little bit both ways. You see Rowe playing a little bit both ways. It's such an important game for the Tigers. You know, like we said at the opening, I think if they win this game, find a way to win next week, they're going to get to host potentially a playoff game. So it's huge. And Kennedy, for sure, if they win their last two, they're hosting the game. Kennedy on a five game winning streak, five and two, ranked number four in the state. They're going to throw a quick pass near side, and this is McCreary. Stiff arms a man and then steps out of bounds. I'm surprised they haven't done more of that tonight. Cedar Falls Corners have given those receivers all kinds of room. As a guy who loves the hitch pass, it's funny because as soon as he caught it, I was nervous. Yeah, I was extremely nervous because he's. I watched the movie made of the ten, and we had two guys there and couldn't even get a hand on him. Cyrus Courtney, number four, came in with their leading receiver with over 50 catches on the third and short. Gianforte dives forward following that massive offensive line. I think they could do that four times in a row. Get a first down about every time. Well, their center, Braylon Edwards, 6'3, 300 pounds. The guards, Austin Rave, 6'225. The other guard, Andrew Mosier, 6'4, 270. Tackles, Nick Brooks, 6'8, 385. And Logan Johnson, 6'1, 270. Where's the beef? What's well, it? Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Back to pass. G and forward to Dave Campbell gets to him. Ball loose. Is it going to be ruled a fumble? They're going to say his arm is going forward. And it's an incomplete pass. Police are going to show up after this game. They're going to arrest Campbell. <laughs> He's just completely abused this Kennedy <laughs> offensive line. Well, I said earlier that speed is just Brooks can't handle him over there with that speed. He has no chance. Does a good job of dipping in, inside arm yeah. and rip and dipping underneath. Well, they'll be teammates in a couple years at Iowa. So now it's a second down and 10. Ball to 16. Play action. Gianforte throws it deep. Oh, he overthrows it and almost intercepted. Chance for the pick for the Tigers by Nolan <laughs> Plegi again. He's kind of smiling because he knows he, he could have had that one. That was close. Just over the top. Then I thought it was caught. Yeah, that was a crazy series of events there. Initially, I thought for a moment he yeah. was falling down with the football. Yeah. Third and ten. Ball resting at the 16. Quick crowd for this final game at the dome for Cedar Falls. Gianforte has time and delivers a bullet touchdown. He, and there he is, the dangerous Pierce. No, excuse me, that's Cyrus Courtney. Another touchdown reception. So that play reminded me of the fourth down play where he converted, where he just had so much time. He's too good of a quarterback to be that comfortable. And Courtney just that big target, put it on his body, and he's in the end zone. So it's a short drive. Again, the huge kickoff by Trevor Scott sparking Kennedy. Extra point coming up here. Dylan Augustine. And up and good. This feels like a playoff game to me, Martin. <laughs> it looks a lot like it. Two quality teams. Both teams responding. 
big bounce back here from Kennedy on that touch after touchdown from the Tigers. Again, Courtney coming into the game uh, led 5A in touchdown receptions. That's number nine for him. Well, he and, and then uh, you say White has seven reception receiving yeah, touchdowns too. Yeah. And Pierce, McCrary, Courtney, White, the two backs of Doyle and Trevor Scott. I mean, they have some weapons, don't they? That's it's impressive. They've only given up 14 points so far. And well, last year, Cedar Falls upset Kennedy. They came in five and out. It was a game in late September, and the Tigers won 23-16 after jumping out on top 16 nothing after the first quarter, and ahead 23-3 at halftime. Then they had to hang Hold on, on. Yep. chewing our fingernails at the end of that game. Mark Simpson along John Yoakum Jeremiah Longnecker joining us as well in this final regular season game ever at the Unidome. So we're looking back at some of the great memories here throughout this broadcast. Here's the kickoff and here comes Logan Rowe. And he puts his head down and just keeps the legs moving and gets across the 35 up to about the 37. 323 remaining here in the third. I thought the Tigers would run a lot of gadget plays tonight. We've seen some different yeah, moves here. They're going to open up the tool chest here. It's last one in the dome and huge game against Kennedy at open it up. No need in saving it. We used to have to get written permission from Rem three days ahead of time to run a gadget play. <laughs> and then you, you leave <laughs> and they right. run them all the time. That's right. right? Yeah. First and ten, ball at the 36. Well, Rose at quarterback might have a fifth, or no, sorry, still fourth pass attempt. <laughs> Rowe working out of the Wildcat, Remmert in motion. They fake it a will, and Logan, no gain on the play. Kennedy, not fooled. Mentioned John about that uh, defense for Kennedy with the hybrid. Maybe explain that a little bit better. Well, you go ahead and talk on that. Well, you know they put three down linemen, and then they have the it's a three-five, and they'll they'll stack three linebackers right behind their down three guys, and then they put two guys out in space, and, and it's hard to identify and account for those people, and that's the whole idea. You have five good athletes, you have three space eaters up front, um, and the best way to go at it is right at it. You try to get to the edges, it's really difficult. Second and ten. Hermanson back in the game. Gelhaus slowed down in the backfield and just picks up a yard. So that's when I was a linebacker. You're taught if somebody pulls, you go right with that guard and try to beat him to the spot. That's exactly what number five did there. Henry made a nice play on the on the ball there. You ask an offensive, excuse me, Mark. You ask an offensive lineman, would you rather block a guy with his hand on the turf? Would you rather try to block a guy in space? And you'd always rec rather block a guy that you know where he is. That's what makes this defense tough at times. Approaching the two minute mark here in this third quarter, Cedar Falls up by three. Long pass over the middle at loss, and it's going to be intercepted. Going back the other way, it's McCrary. Another interception for the Cougars. And Kennedy deep in the Tiger territory. It looked like Dars was maybe open down the seam there, but great play on the ball. McCrary. Well, Kennedy's got the momentum now. Defense has got to step up. Ball spotted at the 35. Pierce McCrary, 6'3, 175 pound junior, taking that ball away from Will Remmer. And this is where Kennedy starts to wear on you a little bit. They had a nice drive last time. Those big linemen, it's tough. Quarters three and four, keep fighting that. And just gradually wear you down for a team that's averaging 39 points a ball game. In motion is Courtney. Quick pitch and hit, and the I thought the ball may have came out at the end, but holding on to it is Jacob Doyle. When they ran the same play to the right side last time, they bring Courtney in motion as lead blocker, and Kurnot reads oh, it really well. Oh, the ball well. did come out there. Yep, he's able to get on it. And Doyle just was able to bring it in. You gotta get some of those breaks in a game like this. Again, 
Doyle averaging almost seven yards a carry. He and Scott both carrying, averaging 6.9 yards a carry. Second and 11. They're going to pass as Gianforte throws it, and the ball through the hands of one of the receivers, uh, Woods, Davari and Harris. Of Woods, and almost into the hands of Harris. Yes. Wow. I think Woods tips it first right here. And then Harris almost oh. catches it off the tip. And both of them are open because Gertis splits, splits to, to the quarterback. Big down here. Third and 11. Ball at the Cedar Falls 36. Big student section for Cedar Falls. A great job this year supporting uh, the Tigers. Gianforte out of the gun. Back to pass. They're going to run the draw play, and the Tigers, Drew Campbell, does it again. Trips up Trevor Scott. They just can't block him. <laughs> You're going to run a draw. Okay, well, Campbell's going to be there waiting for him. Jeez. He featured his brother Jack at halftime during his uh, great career at Cedar Falls. The most talked about his motor. The most contact he had on that play was him hitting himself after the play, I think. I'm sure you guys get asked this all the time. You know, what's Drew Campbell like compared to his brother? I said, there's no comparison because they play completely yeah. different styles. Fourth down and 11. Gianforte has time. Now the pocket closing. And Campbell giving chase. They throw it out in the flat. Trevor Scott takes the ball close to oh, the first down, and they got the first down on fourth and 11. Oh, what a huge play. Trevor Scott getting free. As Drew Campbell breathing down Jane Forte. And Trevor Scott spent most of that play blocking. When everything breaks down, he just kind of slips out, and that was the last option. Great coverage downfield by the Tigers and good pressure, and just a good play there by Scott. And so Gian Forte to, to extend the play. It was Trevor Scott's long kickoff return that really sparked Kennedy when it looked like the Tigers were starting to take momentum. I formation and officials timeout. Oh, that's the ends of end of the third quarter. Getting so wrapped up in this game, I didn't even see what the time was. It's a three-point lead for Cedar Falls going into the fourth. We'll be back with more from the Unidome right after this on Cedar Falls Community Television. Experience the Kia difference at Witham Kia. Engineered with purpose and designed to inspire, the groundbreaking Kia lineup of award-winning vehicles offers something for everyone. Like the new Kia Sorento, offering powerful engine options, ample seating and cargo space, and available all-wheel drive. Or the new Kia Sportage, where fun and functional meet so you can take control of any adventure. Everything we do is driven by you. Tigers holding on to a slim three point lead heading into the fourth quarter. And a huge game for Cedar Falls with a win. They solidify a playoff spot. Cougars, after converting on fourth and 11, they'll run the ball. There's Trevor Scott who had that big reception to keep this drive alive. Oh, look at the second, third effort. He's still carrying tacklers down to the two yard line. Well, How did he get think, out of there? I didn't even thank Brooks for that one. Brooks just picks him up and carries him. Brooks I don't know if I've like ever that? seen that. Yeah. I honestly, I don't know that I've ever seen this. So, I just lay it, pick him up. He just bear. <laughs> Look at that. That is amazing. That's like something you'd see in a movie. Yeah, like Ripley's Believe It or Not or so like that. Wow, Nick Brooks. There, looks like they're discussing. I don't know if it's a legal play or. Or if there was an inadvertent whistle. Uh, let's hope so. Because they're not, they're placing the football at Ford the 18 yard stop, line. Maybe or something like that. Now, is the, I don't know this, I don't know is the high it. school rule the same as it is? <laughs> it just picks him up. That is a. And I'm wondering, is that legal? I well, guess I have never seen that before. Brad Remmert is super upset. 
Yeah, I don't think you can shove him like the Eagles do with the tush push right. thing. I don't think you can do that in high school. I think he wants a penalty. It's a five yard gain, second and five. They're at the 18. Near Scott, left side of the line of scrimmage, breaks free from the line of scrimmage and pushed out of bounds inside the 10. And the Cougars threatening to take the lead again. This feels like they're wearing us down a little bit on the line. They're starting to get some holes now that weren't there before. First in goal from the eight yard line. So those battering Rams of Trevor Scott and Jacob Doyle. Tiger defense has played very well, but uh, it looks like Kennedy starting to wear them down here as we begin the fourth. Saw something I've never seen in a football game two plays ago. Gianforte hands it off. Scott oh. Campbell, I think. Yeah. Drew Campbell has been brilliant tonight. Another stop. My goodness. You know, one of the advantages, I think they're trying to block him more one on one than most teams will even try because of Brooks's talent and Brooks's ability and their size. But that's just a mistake at this level. You just can't block him. Second and goal from the seventh. Can the Tiger defense keep the Cougars out of the end zone? Watch out for those dangerous wide receivers. McCreary and Courtney split wide to the right. They like to go to uh, White in these situations. Roll out, Gianforte throws it. Intercepted in the end zone by Cedar Falls. The Tigers come through in the clutch. And it's Caleb Whelan with his biggest play as a Tiger. Good pressure here. It's like Cook gets a little pressure. Whelan's right there. There's four Tigers, five Tigers around there, nowhere to go with the ball. Kind of an ill advised throw there. Whelan, his first interception of the season, comes at an opportune time. Now, Gianforte had only thrown. Uh, coming in this game, three interceptions, and he's thrown two tonight. There's been some careless plays with the football tonight, uh, without a doubt. Tigers are fortunate there that Gene Forte makes one. So Cedar Falls back on offense, trying to find a little bit of mojo here. And that's a good start on first down as Drake Gellhaus has been held in check. For most of the second half, they're able to get good yardage on first down. You would love to see the Tigers be able to run the ball a little bit, run some clock, let that defensive line rest. They're just, they've been out there a lot here in the second half. Christian Gasper with the tackle. You don't too see too many zeros, numeral zeros. <laughs> Agent zero. <laughs> in football. <laughs> Second down and three. And Tigers run with Gellhaus. And he'll pick up the first down. This you have direction to give, play. Uh, have to give Gellhaus credit there because they had more guys than we could block. We blocked two of them. But Gellhaus makes 35 miss. White miss right there in the hole. And he's their leading tackler. Good blocking on the guys we could get to. But Gellhaus makes one guy miss and picks up 10 yards or so there. He kind of got hobbled a little bit when he came up at the end of that play, too. Yeah. Calvin White, critical player on both sides of the field for the Cougars. Oh, look at the running room. And again, Tigers. That offensive line. What'd you say, Jeremiah? Run right at him. Run right at him. <laughs> run right at him. That's, that's the plan. Yeah. You know, the success they've had in this game has been when they've done that. This is not an east west defense, it's a north south defense. Brian White, the head coach for uh, Kennedy, said they prepared this week for the noise here at the Dome by pumping in loud cr crowd noise through speakers all week in practice. This has been a, a vocal Tiger crowd tonight as Gelhaus weaves his way for another first down. Tigers starting to get out of that hole they had. And that huge interception by Caleb Whelan. Stop. You can see on that play, Gellhaus gets hit on 43, gets to the 47. That's the difference between second or third down and first down. 
845 to play in the ball game 17 14 Tigers with a narrow lead over Cedar Rapids Kennedy. They're confused on where they're shifting right now. And Gelhouse slowed down but always seems to fall forward doesn't he John. Exactly. This is a, this strong legs is powerful and always has that forward lean. Kennedy was fortunate there because they were kind of shifting different places moving different places. They were lucky there wasn't a huge hole there. Mark Simpson along with John Yoakum Jeremiah Longnecker also helping us out tonight this final regular season game at the Unidome. Tigers trying to Looks like close Gilles out the victory. Over that turf rash you're talking about in that oh, article oh I read, that read today. <laughs> The turf's a little nice now than it used to be, but this turf is like soft toilet paper compared to that original. <laughs> Second and seven. Oh, and Hermanson's going to throw and out of bounds as a Kai Smith, the intended receiver. I think he may have just thrown that away. Well, They're trying to isolate Remert kind of on a deep, deep post, and Hermanson didn't like it. And there's no point in turning the ball over if you don't like the throw and move on to the next play. Tate with a couple touchdown passes tonight. Good catch on the <laughs> sidelines. That's get him a jersey. Well, my Wellington. <laughs> so now it's a big third and seven at midfield for Cedar Falls. Want to hold on to that football and keep it away from yeah. that dangerous Cougar offense. But I think I think Jake Peters reset his hand. I think that's what they. It really wasn't a false start, but like by letter of the law, it was. He's just kind of resetting his hand. You see right here. Just reset his hand. Looks good eyes, John. Well officiated game tonight. That was Eagle Eye John Yoko. I think I'd let that one go, but <laughs> but yeah. If I'm standing right next to the Kennedy coaches, they're probably pointing that out as well though. So, so the Tigers need to get to the 38 of Kennedy. Basically a third and twelve. This is Tiger offense not really built for these third and longs. Oh, and they fumble the snap and scramble. And who recovered? And the Tigers got on it. Not a lot of energy out of Kennedy there. So the kind of tripped coming out. I don't know if he got stepped on or just, don't, just didn't get the ball. Well, the exchange yeah. was the exchange was just not clean there. Tate didn't get the ball, but falling down he. Batted the ball backwards, and one of the Tigers able to recover. Kai Smith was, it was Kai Smith. Yep. So near disaster, but now into punt. This is Julian McCleary. His best punt. Fair catch made. Getting comfortable now. Didn't have problems on the first punt, but has responded well last two times. And let's go to the vault. Some great plays in Cedar Falls history. And uh, Jeremiah talked about Kale Losher. He's the best that's ever played here. We've had a lot of good quarterbacks over the years, but uh, Kale was amazing. Uh, I actually heard from Kale today after the article came out. Jim Nelson wrote in the Courier. Kale just said, We kicked a lot of words I can't say. <laughs> and, uh, he was just phenomenal, Kale was. And he just, yeah. Uh, it's the fun, end of the fun personality too. Oh boy, I, mean, I just can't say enough about him. And uh, honestly, Kale's pretty fortunate to still be with us right now. We've battled pretty tough illness, so extra special. But uh, one of my all-time favorites. That was a game against Prairie. The Tigers won 56-42 <laughs> to cap off an undefeated season. Yeah, that was. Uh, oh boy. That was the run by Doyle just moments ago on first down, second down and nine coming up. 635 remaining in the ball game. Trips right for the Cougars. Gianforte back to pass. Little slant in and caught by Harris. Good tackle in yes, space. Keys. keys there on the tackle, sets up third and short. Talk about Jared Keyes. I think he's had a pretty good junior season. He's long and athletic, and he's he's made a lot of big plays. Very physical too with the tackles. I think he's a potential D1 kid myself. He can run. He's got the physicality. He can play in space. 
That was a tough spot in this defense. We've seen him block Super a, impressed with him. Yeah, we've seen him block a punt this year, an interception. Here we go, third down and about two, and they're going to run the ball. Oh, the Tigers! Stuffed him. Get all over him. Right on cue. <laughs> Wow. So they hold Kennedy on third down and two. Stood up right in the hole. Keys, Curtis, and now it's a fourth down. They are going to give him about a yard gain on that play. So Maybe the one they put Brooks at guard and just mash it right up the middle. Yeah. The offense stays on. 5.08 remaining in the ball game. Time now becoming a factor. Comes Kennedy for Gian Forte in the sneak and unstoppable at this level, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Just not enough, not enough beef up there to match that. First down for Kennedy. And what a luxury when you know you can pick up a yard in critical situations like that. Gian Forte started last year as a sophomore. For the Cougars. Now the Tiger defense trying to come up with another stop. They have forced four turnovers in this game. Play action. Gene Forte. He'll throw it and block in the back. Oh, oh, and here comes Courtney. Courtney rumbles his way, and that's a first down. Tiger fans wanted the uh, clip. Nothing called, no flags down. It's a first down catch. It's like Cooner gets blocked in the back right there. Yep. Two hands right in the back. Mather, the tight end, got away with one. You can't miss those out in space. Sometimes inside in the line play, you get away with some stuff. You can't get away with that on the edge like that. First and 10 now. Cougars at the 44 yard line. Gian Forte looking left. No, he throws over the middle, breaking a tackler and still on his feet. And that's a Nick Woods with the catch. And now the Cougars going through the air and gaining some big yardage. Yeah, I feel like against that zone coverage, they're just trying to attack across the middle, get their athletes in space, and go from there. Clock show. Approaching the four minute mark remaining in the ball game. Tigers trying to hang on here. And roll out left. They're going to throw. Incomplete. Woods takes a big shot from behind. Yeah, and those, and those plays, the only thing I worry about is getting a, some kind of illegal contact or excessive, <laughs> excessive contact penalty, but <laughs> such a big shot there. Coonrot lowering the shoulder stops the clock three minutes 51 seconds to go both teams with three timeouts remaining last time Kennedy had a first in goal and it was Jacob or Caleb Whelan with that big interception the Tiger defense step up another time stumbling forward is Trevor Scott third down Six, seven yards to go. Boy, the Cougars have give them credit tonight. They have converted on these big downs this evening. And it just feels like it's going to come down to a defensive stop for the Tigers. If they're going to win this game, it's going to come on a defensive stop. And this is the 280th game ever played for the Tigers here at the Unidome. They want to send out the dome with a win here. Six, quick pass, complete, and Harris turns it off the field and takes it to a first down at the 30. Oh man, Kennedy, so many weapons. It's those quick hitters get their athletes in space, and I guess they, as you mentioned several times, John, though, you know, if the Tigers are unable to get the heat on Gian Forte, it just makes them even more dangerous. 250 to go in the game. Cougars methodically working down the field. 
a pass into traffic broken up. Nice play by Plaguey there. Cornerback Corner Nolan Plaguey breaks that up. Look at that play on the ball there by Plaguey. Gets his hand right in oh, there. Look at that. I don't know if that was a little chippy. Got a little chippy between Whelan and Courtney after the play. And delivered his leg into his helmet. He could have been just trying to get off him. This is an important game and motions are running high, so you're going to have some of that. Second and ten, ball to 30, late in this contest. Tigers break the heat and they take the quarterback down. Keys. I think it's Caleb Larson ended up getting the sack. Keys got the initial pressure and then Caleb Larson cleaned it up. And Caleb Larson is a kid that plays all over that defensive line. You'll see him sub in at tackle. You'll see him at the end. He's used all over in there. So defensively, what are you doing here, Jeremiah? Yeah, you know, you, you got to play off. You, you have to allow some yards. The big problem is Kennedy's kicker's got a big leg. Um, and they're so hard to tackle in space. And, and they're so hard to tackle in space. So third and 18. They're going to play. Looks like they're going to play two man. Screen and they lob it out to Scott. Scott cuts up the field and finally brought down from behind. And it looks like he may, maybe just short of the first down. They, third and 18. And I think they get 17 out of it. I think they're about three or four yards short. Uh, I'm very surprised that they are not deciding to kick it. I think they're just going to do that push again. Clock continues to roll. They have all three timeouts remaining. Minute 26 to go. They keep the offense out there. So, uh, big gamble. And Gianforte dives know. forward. Kennedy says they have enough. And depends that spot on the spot. Is short on the far side, about just short of the 20. I think they got to get to the 20. Tigers, they're celebrating. Tigers hold it looks like first down Tigers Cedar Falls holds on fourth and two. How do you like that? And just like you said Jeremiah you got a great kicker on, on your team. A, a sneak from a yard is OK from two or three. That's tough. Well, it, it kind of falls down the quarterback. You can see that slips. he did. He, he lost his feet out from under it. Wasn't able to get any leverage. Minute and 11 seconds to go. Again, the Cougars have all three timeouts to go. Brian White pacing the sidelines, arms folded. And again, it did look like Gianforte just slipped, leaning forward. Hang on to the football. Gelhouse runs into a wall and a quick timeout taken by the Cougars. You can see Gelhouse values the ball here, covers up with both arms. He's not giving anybody a chance to get at this. Just swallows the ball up and puts the pads down. So it's also one of those times you tell your running backs it's not time to, to stretch for extra yards either. You know, you get what you can, get down, because once you start spinning, that's when that ball presents itself to defenders able to knock it out. Uh, another. So you want to be a coach. Yeah. Mark. Another nail biter between the Tigers and the <laughs> Cougars. Stressful situation after stressful situation. Last year, Cedar Falls hung on to win 23-16. And if the Tigers can come away with the win here, oh, but John, you feel that they might be able to host a playoff game if they I can do. win their you, next game you, as well. You know, your RPI is made up of your opponents and your opponents' yeah. opponents. Well, Kennedy's five and two, great record. You up your win percentage, you up your opponent's win percentage, and then you hopefully finish the deal against Davenport West, who has a decent record as well. Um, you put yourself in a great position. And so there for the taking, second down and seven. One minute, six seconds We're to go. We're going to need the quarterback. Here we go. <laughs> Get him in there. Hermanson, quarterback sneak, picks up two, and again the timeout. I yeah. remember though the Tigers punting. It's been a little bit shaky. I was in this just going to bring that up. That it, the big thing is the clean snap and clean kick and those kind of things. But 
You know, if we get an okay hole, Gellhaus can battering ram for three or four or five yards to get a first down. Throughout the time. And so Kennedy down to one timeout remaining. One minute and two seconds to go. Tigers have the ball at their own 27. Now Tigers get a first down, and I think what's well, they're gonna be able to run the clock out. But another thing to think about here with the athleticism of Hermanson. It's a little more risky, but that naked boot with the quarterback, Jeremiah, what do you think? I'm a huge fan. Yeah, I yeah, won a lot of yeah. won a lot of games over the years, and when the least the time you least expect it, you go that you're uh, you're unbalanced one way, you fake it to Gale House and, and you go the other. And if it's not there, you fall on it. Exactly. There's Gertis. And the thing I like is you got a senior quarterback that's a good athlete running the ball. So Fookman in that fullback position, third and four. Kennedy, everybody at the line of scrimmage. And here comes Gal House. Oh, there, there it is. he goes! First down and then some! Just get out. Just get no, no, no. Well, in this that's case, right. it doesn't that's matter. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. First down, and the Tigers are going to win it. Oh, what a huge run! Well, Jeremiah, you said earlier, run at him. And look at, look at right that up move, the middle. Though. That move in the hole, back to the right. I'm surprised the flag wasn't thrown for the late hit or the late tackle. Look how far he is out of bounds. I think the officials have done an incredible yeah. job tonight of staying out of this game. Well, it's going to be a big win for the Tigers here tonight. 44 seconds to go. Brian White watching his team's five game winning streak in jeopardy right now. So the Tigers will improve to five and three if they can hang on. You know, and both coaches talked about the, the strength of their schedule. I think Kennedy started off with a really tough schedule, but it's kind of eased off a little bit where I think the Tigers have just had tough one after tough one after tough one after mm. tough one. And, and, uh, and they're extremely battle tested. And it seems like they're getting a little bit healthier at the right time. Um, so big win tonight for the Tigers. Both teams be playing Davenport schools next week. Tigers on the road at West. Well, Kennedy will be at home against North. Everybody's favorite formation. Uh, Tate Harmon set. Oh, senior night. Yeah, and, snap uh, it one more time. Tigers right? seniors. Boy, the 28 seniors have really stepped up. A lot of heroes tonight. Biggest play of the game may have been Caleb Wheeland with that interception in the end zone. When it looked like Kennedy was going to take the lead. Just 19 seconds to go in the game. And this will be the final play ever for Cedar Falls in a regular season game at the Unidome. And it's Tate Hermanson the, going to one knee. Formation. Here's our play of the game. And this was Gianforte. Bad decision, and the Tigers. Caleb Whelan's first interception of the year. Perfect timing. Violated the golden rule of quarterbacking. Throwing it back over Don't the middle. Don't throw late over the middle. Huge win for Cedar Falls tonight. Tiger fans coming out to celebrate here on the dome as the Tigers take down number four Cedar Rapids Kennedy. Boy, what a tremendous job by our Cedar Falls community television crew tonight with the, the past highlights we saw, just this game itself. Uh, what a wonderful job that they do. We get so spoiled throughout the year. Unbelievable. Yeah, thanks for having me and let me be a part of it. Oh, Jeremiah Lawnecker, thank you for oh, stepping in the night. Was, yeah, this was this is a lot of fun, guys. You gotta get the champion back up here for the, <laughs> the last game in the dome. Oh, it's, it's a fun one to watch. Jeremiah, the uh, quarterback on that 86 state championship team, longtime coach for the Tigers as well. Hey, uh, great job uh, again by our Cedar Falls Community Television uh, crew. Hope you enjoyed it. A fun one here at the dome as Cedar Falls. Sends the dome out with a victory over Cedar Rapids Kennedy. I'm Mark Simpson, and you've been watching Tiger Football on Cedar Falls Community Television.